looks like a sculpture, doesn't it? It's um, it's a fibula and a femur, a uh, fibula and a tibia, a handy with a couple of menisci on top. He's making some models. It's coming out all right. Better than last time, it fell over. This is cool, isn't it? Um, so I'm in the other lab, and this is set up for an exam on Monday. So the, the main anatomy lab with all our models and bits and bobs in is also filled with students right now, which is lovely to see. I don't know if it's a bit of a worry to see them all spending more time in the lab at the end of the year, but hey, I guess it's normal, isn't it? Um, so they're all studying for their exam on Monday. This room is set up for the exam on Monday. Um, so I thought I'd record a little video and because I've been chatting to students about various things, we were looking at brains the other day and skulls and that sort of thing, I thought that maybe we could talk about the dural venous sinuses. You know those guys in here? Um, just because I realised that it's quite difficult to, to recognise them sometimes in different sections and link them all up and make a 3D crown almost as it is, as it were, of the dural venous sinuses. Let's do that. Let's do, let's have a short chat about the big dural venous sinuses, where you can expect to see them, um, maybe what they are and how the blood gets there and stuff like that, um, and why you don't see them in certain models and sections of, uh, of cut, yeah? Okay, so what we're talking about, what we're talking about are these things here. And you can see that this is a dural venous sinus. So it's inside the skull and it's receiving blood from the brain. And people don't talk about this much, but we have all the arteries, you know, they've got the internal carotid arteries and the vertebral arteries and the basilar artery and they've got the circle of Willis and you've got all those uh, cerebral arteries branching from there and supplying blood to the brain. We talk about those a lot, right? And we talk about the parts of the brain. You can see these are the cerebral arteries here and they're running in the subarachnoid space. Um, and then we see blood collecting in the dural venous sinuses kind of magically on some models. You will see some veins, but look. You see loads of arteries, don't you? Loads of arteries all over this model. Loads of arteries in here. Loads of arteries and veins on the outside. How does the blood get into the dural venous sinus then? It's the same as everywhere else in the body you've got. You've got arteries going in, and then you've got a capillary bed perfusing blood to the brain, and then you've got veins coming out. And um, the brain is a little bit special, it's a little bit privileged because instead of having your normal leaky capillaries like you have everywhere else in the body, um, the cells, the endothelial cells in the blood vessels, uh, the capillaries and what have you around the brain are tightly stuck together by tight junctions to prevent stuff leaking from inside the blood vessel into the, the cerebrospinal fluid that the brain is bathed in, right? Um, it wants the glucose and it wants the oxygen, it wants to get rid of the CO2, just like every other organ in the body. Um, <clears throat> but it's a little bit privileged in the fact that it doesn't have leaky capillaries. The blood vessels are tightly closed off. And that's the blood-brain barrier that people talk about, right? Yeah, so those things are transported across the blood-brain barrier. Um, by stuff. You have arteries that get branches and branches and branches and get smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually get capillary beds Then the blood from those capillary beds goes into veins which get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger and those veins then drain into these dural venous sinuses. That's where the blood comes from. But nobody really talks about those capillaries for some reason. I don't know. Uh, sometimes students don't think about it. You may be aware that the brain is covered by layers of connective tissue. So the we can see here, here's the cerebrum, right? We've got the folds of the cerebrum. So we've got the gyri, which are the folds. We've got the sulci, which are the, the gaps in between the folds. And uh, that brain, that cerebrum is tightly covered by pia mater, which is a very, very thin covering. And then that's covered by arachnoid mater. And it's called arachnoid mater because it, between the pia mater and the arachnoid mater, if you were to tease those apart, it looks like cobwebs, looks like spiders live there, hence arachnoid. Um, and that's where we find many of these arteries and blood vessels and what have you. But then all of that is covered by the dura mater. Dura meaning, you know, durable, tough, hard. So the dura mater 
lies between the arachnoid mater and the bone of the skull. Um, and it has two layers. It's got a periosteal layer next to the bone, periosteal, and it has a meningeal layer. And most of the time, those two layers are stuck together and they're holding the brain in place and they're doing a grand job. Um, occasionally, those two layers separate a little bit and they create a space in between the two layers. And that space is lined by endothelium like we see in blood vessels elsewhere in the body. And where that occurs, uh, we have veins draining into those spaces and those spaces fill with blood and those become the dural venous sinuses. That's what the dural venous sinuses are then. They're within the dura mater, they're lined with um, endothelial cells and they're collecting the blood that's draining from the brain. So then they're important. Um, bridging veins, linking all these things together can be torn. So if you have, um, if you have a bleed in this layer, um, we have a subdural hemorrhage. Um, and that tends to be a venous blood. I, I don't, I want to talk about the dural venous sinuses, but I don't really want to talk about all the blood vessels and um, hemorrhage and that sort of thing. We should leave that for another day. Anyway, so that's what the dural venous sinuses are. Now let's have a look and see what we can see. Right. Now, this is a mid-sagittal section through the head, right? Now this big fella up here, this is the superior sagittal sinus. It's superior, because it is. It's sagittal, because it's in the mid-sagittal plane. And it's a sinus. So this is the superior sagittal sinus, fairly big. And we can see this here, which we'll come back to in a minute. Now, if there's a superior sagittal sinus, then that suggests that there should be an inferior sagittal sinus. But we can't see it on here. Why can't we see it on here? Hmm. I've got this fella, let's take him apart. We can see some bits in there. Cerebellum fell out. We can see some of the dura mater here, right? Forming some connective tissues. We've got bone here. Now if I take half of the, the brain out, so I'm taking cerebrum, pons medulla, midbrain out. It's a bit of a messy side. What we're left with then are some of the shapes formed by the dura mater. So the dura mater is forming shapes that are holding the brain in place. This is the Falk's cerebri. This is in the midline, cerebri, between the cerebral hemispheres. And this is the tentorium cerebelli, because down here, we should have the cerebellum. Right? We should have the cerebellum, but it fell off. So this is a tentorium, because it's like a tent. Cerebelli, because it's above the cerebellum. Anyway, and we can see in here, can you see that? In there, there's that superior sagittal sinus we were looking at. Now you can see another sinus here. This is the inferior sagittal sinus. So it's within this folk cerebri. So we can't see it on this model because the folk cerebri has been taken away and the inferior sagittal sinus is within the folk cerebri, right? So it's gone, but it would be here. Superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus would be here. What we would see, we'd see this inferior sagittal sinus draining into this sinus here. Can we see it on this model? Oh, yeah, we can see it on here, can't we? Look, it's a bit mucky, this model, for some reason. They get dropped a lot, like I just did, I think. Um, but here's the inferior sagittal sinus, here's the superior sagittal sinus, and look, we've got this, this sinus here. This is the straight sinus then, okay? And you can kind of, you see that under there? There's the straight sinus. Anyway, so that's what this is. This is the straight sinus. So the superior sagittal sinus, the straight sinus, and the inferior sagittal sinus would drain into the straight sinus would pass in here. Now here we're starting to get a bit busy, aren't we? And we can see the hint we can see the hint of another blood vessel there. So now we need to think in this dimension. So if we look at this guy, can you see this is where the superior sagittal sinus was. This is where the straight sinus was. So this is that sinus that's coming out laterally here. And it's running transversely 
So this is the transverse sinus. This is the right transverse sinus. So we've got another sinus under here. This is the occipital sinus, because of course this is the uh, occipital region here. Um, and you can see, so this is, the transverse sinus has been cut open here, so it's easier to see. It's not so easy to see here because it's still embedded within the dura mater. Uh, the other thing, if I flip this around, is, so up here, this is where you find the circle of Willis, right? We've got the internal carotid arteries here, and we've got the basilar artery coming up here, and what have you, but around this region here, we can't really see it. We can see a hint of some of the venous sinuses there. We can see a hint of the veins, right? But in there, that's where we find the cavernous sinus. And really, the cavernous sinus is more like a plexus of veins in the dura mater, all crossing over all of these other structures here, all these nerves that are passing anteriorly and the blood vessels, the arteries that are going up through it. So we've got a real busy, tight-packed area here. And all these arteries that we talked about in the Circle of Willis video, and we've got some of the cranial nerves here. These are all surrounded by what we call the cavernous sinus. If we go back to the transverse sinus here, so we've got the superior sagittal sinus draining in here, and we've got the inferior sagittal sinus here draining to the straight sinus, <gasps> draining to the transverse sinus, and we've got the occipital sinus here. So we've got a lot of sinuses coming together, so we call this point the confluence of sinuses. Makes sense, right? this point, confluence of sinuses, because all the sinuses are coming together. And the blood is then going to flow around the transverse sinus. And I don't know if you can see, but it then we've got another sinus here, which kind of makes a bit of an S wiggly shape down here. And that's the sigmoid sinus, named because it's S shaped. So transverse sinus, then sigmoid sinus. And what we can't see under this connective tissue is where the sigmoid sinus is going. If we look on the skull, you can see the same thing. There's the transverse sinus. You see that nice S bend of the, of the sigmoid sinus, and you can see all the other sinuses draining to this point here. And you can see, can you see there's a hole there? All right, you see there's a hole there? So these dural venous sinuses are then draining blood through that hole. And that's a big, ugly hole because it's got a lot of things going through it. And the thing that goes through that hole is the internal jugular vein and three cranial nerves, cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11. That's why it's ugly and misshapen. But the internal jugular vein starts there. So the dural venous sinuses then pass the blood out through the sigmoid sinus and out through the internal jugular vein. And that's what we see here. All right, you can see the... So you can see the internal jugular vein painted in blue, nice and dark, and that's where all that blood from all of the dural venous sinuses is draining through. And um, runs through the neck. And here it is here, you can see it on this guy, right? So I've taken the sternocleidomastoid muscle off and there is the internal jugular vein. Big vein draining all that blood from the uh, cranial cavity, from the brain, back to the circulatory system, right? Whew. Okay, so there you go. Uh, the dural venous sinuses, that's what they are. That's how blood gets there. That's what they're made of. Um, and those are the big ones that you really should know about. There are a few others kicking around, like, you see this one up here? All right, this is the petrous part of the temporal bone, and there's a, a dural venous sinus running along it. Do you wanna have a guess what that's called? Petrous part of the temporal bone. It's called the petrosal sinus. And in fact, there are, I think, superior and inferior petrosal sinuses, because there's one up here, one down there. All right, here's the sphenoid bone here. We see another sinus painted on there. Um, so you've got parietal bone here, right? Parietal meaning wall, sphenoid bone here. So this sinus is the sphenoparietal sinus. But these are all the little ones. Know the big ones. The big ones are really important. Know the big ones, know where they are, know how they flow into each other. And have a look at these on CT scans and MR scans if you can, and see if you can recognize these things. They're not very easy to see all the time, but um, yeah, have a look, see if you can see um, these dural venous sinuses on, on radiological images. 3D, 
2D, 2D, you know, add it all together. This is how you build it up in your head. Once you've built it up in your head, I mean, it's already in your head, but when it's in your head, when you understand it, when you've got that three-dimensional stuff sorted, then it's all a lot easier for you, isn't it? Okay, right, all done. Dural venous sinuses. Uh, see you next week.